Anthropic is racing against Google and OpenAI. Create a budget spreadsheet for a small YouTube channel and it's already making the budget tracker. Let's just build a one-page HTML website. Don't worry, you don't need to know anything about coding. This code is broken and will not run. Fix the problem. This is pretty weird. Now, me personally, I have not seen this very often. To be honest, this feels just like, you know, advice from an actual mentor. Anthropic just released Sonnet 4.5 to the public and you won't believe what this AI can achieve. They claim it can work 30 hours straight and I'm not only talking about chatting, but also coding, planning and managing tasks. Today, I will not only tell you about this model, I'm actually gonna give you a live demonstration of what it can do. Stick around because the results might seriously shock you. So first of all, let me tell you why does this launch matter? Well, first of all, these updates usually feel small, almost invisible to the final user. But Sonnet 4.5 is clearly aiming for something much bigger. It is is built to act like a real agent. It uses tools, it can write code, and it can plan long projects. So let's start with the background to see where this fits. We all know that Anthropic is racing against Google and OpenAI, that's not a secret. All of the cloud models were praised for their safety and restraint, but this new release, Sonnet 4.5, shows us that they are pushing into a bold territory, I would say. They claim that it focused on a 30-hour coding task without drifting away from the main purpose of the task. And I mean an end-to-end -end project, not just tiny snippets. It can also manage your subtasks just like a human colleague would do. All of the benchmarks are showing really strong improvements over previous cloud models. For example, on SWE Bench, accuracy hit around 77%. On OS World, which pretty much tests tool use, it scored 61%. That is a huge improvement from previous models, and it shows us that Sonnet 4.5 is really good at realist and computer interactions. But numbers alone do not tell us the real story here. What really matters is how it feels to use. So let's dive in and let's see this thing in action. I'm gonna show you what Sonnet 4.5 can do. Let's start with something really simple and practical. Anyone can use this in their day-to-day -day life. Create a budget spreadsheet for a small YouTube channel, include equipment, ads, editing software, and coffee categories. And it's already making the budget tracker live as we speak. This is pretty similar to ChatGPT canvas and there you go so we have the camera microphone lightning google ads social media promotion adobe premiere stock assets coffee for editing sessions this is my monthly budget this is my annual budget and if you want to add a new item you have a drop down menu here you can put whatever you want in here the cost and if you click add item it will be added here a main difference that i see between this and ChatGPT is the fact that ChatGPT will give you just a random table and if you want to change that you're gonna to have to give it another prompt to change that specific value here we have power over adding new items ourselves because this is built like a user interface. I think that you could do the same thing with ChatGPT, but it would be a bit more complicated. So as a first impression, Sonnet 4.5 is giving me much more than I've asked for, which is always a good thing. I only asked for a spreadsheet and it gave me a complete user interface that calculates all of my costs. And it also included this part right here where I can add my own items. Next up, let's give it something for presentations or maybe just a quick outline. So my prompt is make a three slide outline about the future of AI agents. One slide pros, one cons, and one predictions. It already started working, and as you can see right here, we have the first slide, the second slide. It is writing it as I'm speaking with you. And there you go. The results are pretty clear, professional, nicely organized. It literally feels like a ready-to-use presentation. Now, you can always take this text and put it into an AI presentation tool, such as Gamma. I actually made a video about it. If you want to check it out, it's here. And with the help of this output, you can actually make a really nice presentation. Now, let's do some very light coding tasks. Don't worry you don't need to know anything about coding. I'm actually in the same situation. So this is a perfect chance for us to test it coming from someone who doesn't know anything about coding. Let's just build a one page HTML website that says something like welcome to my channel and also include a small button that will link directly to my latest YouTube video. Here's the prompt. Let's run it. It's bringing up the canvas and it's building the website in HTML as we speak. And there you go. It took less than 10 seconds. So for someone who doesn't have any kind of coding knowledge, I would say this is the perfect tool to build something simple. Let's actually check out if this works. Here is our last YouTube video. Let's just copy the link and let's give it a simple prompt the link of my latest YouTube video is this one this is pretty weird so let's open this link it's a link to a video where I was talking about AI browsers but on Claude it tells me that the video is about testing undetectable AI writers this is pretty weird I never mentioned anything about testing AI writers what's even weirder is that we do have a video about testing AI writers but it was posted 10 days ago and I never took a link from that video next up let's test it for debugging because coding is not just about building stuff from scratch it's also about fixing stuff so the way we're gonna do that instead of just 
just doing something really simple. I asked it to paste all of the HTML code here so I can just copy and paste it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this, paste it here and just remove this line and add another E here. Copy the new code with the error, open a new chat, paste it here and give it a prompt. This code is broken and will not run for some reason. Fix the problem. All right. And it's already reporting back. There's a typo in the CSS on line 30. This is how it looks like. And this is how it should look like. It's missing a hyphen and it also fixed the code for me. That's pretty cool. Now here's where it starts to feel a bit different. I'm going to tell it to behave like a startup founder. Pretend you're building a new productivity app for professionals. Complete step number one in detail structure explanation. This should be a bit longer. All right. So it gave us the 15 steps. Let's see if they are actual viable steps. Market research, user research, personal development. <laughs> marketing pre-launch, post-launch. Yeah, this, this looks very good. And it also gave me step one, which is taking care of the market research and competitive analysis. And this is actually a very detailed breakdown of every single step that's included in, in the big step one. It delivered exactly what I've asked for. It's a very clear 15 step roadmap with every milestone that you can imagine and all the responsibilities. And then it, it immediately dove into step number one. And to be honest, this feels less like a chat and more like a project management buddy. Finally, let's try something more personal and human oriented. I told it to act as a career coach for a teacher switching to data science, provide a structured six month learning and action plan. It gives me all of my competitive advantages as a teacher month one to two foundation building month three to four core technical skills, learning focus action items for every single month. This is so cool. Month number five specialization and real world application, learning focus action items, job search sprint, recommended learning resources, structured programs and also books. It also gives me financial financial considerations, meaning that I need a budget to start this target position for career changes, salary expectations, weekly schedule templates, success metrics, which are basically KPIs and mindset reminders. Now this output is that doesn't have any kind of fluff in it. It only has actionable advice and really, really, really useful information. It's also very detailed, has a lot of resources and also some encouragement built into this. To be honest, this feels just like, you know, advice from an actual mentor. All right. So what do the actual benchmarks say here? SWE Bench, Sonnet 4.5 hit 77% accuracy, OS World 61%, and I've already shown you here, check out these previous cloud models and their scores, they are significantly better. Now let's compare it to GPT-5 or even Google Gemini's models, Sonnet pretty much holds its ground, especially as you can see right here in coding performance. And let's not forget about the fact that Agent SDK Anthropic has just launched. And this is basically letting developers build custom AI workers with their own memory. So what are the risks and limitations of this model? Let's keep things into perspective because nothing is perfect out there. They are boasting about the fact that they can run a 30 hour task without interruption. Yes, that is cool, but this would not be free or cheap. Tokens costs money and compute power will definitely add up. This meaning that bigger projects will cost you a lot of money. Another thing about it is that yes, all of these models can still hallucinate. Sometimes it can misinterpret ambiguous instructions and sometimes it can even change the context. Now me personally, I have not seen this very often, but it still happened to me two or three times throughout the time I tested it. Now, Anthropic emphasizes safety and they released Sonnet 4.5 under ASL3 guidelines. It is trained against deception, misbehavior, gaslighting, and all kinds of power seeking issues. But I want you to know that no AI tool out there in the world is bulletproof yet. And for businesses, at least reliability matters a lot more than these new flashy tricks. And in my opinion, that's exactly where Sonnet 4.5 is trying to shine. They are trying to push the limits while keeping their ground and taking care of all of the safety measures and reliability. So what is the bigger story behind this release? In my opinion, I think that AI is moving away from simple chatbot experiences. We're heading towards a new era, which could be described as autonomous AI agents that are taking action on your behalf. And these agents can use tools, plan strategies, manage complexity, take hard decisions. And I would say the Sonnet 4.5 is one of the first that you can actually feel. And this is not just hype. It's here working today, as you've in this video. Now, on the other side, this also means that competition will start to pick up very fast. And as always, every time when something like this launches, the big boys such as OpenAI and Google will respond pretty aggressively. And that's why I would say that the AI race is entering a different phase. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out There's an AI for That, the biggest website for AI tools in the world. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter if you're at it. You can join 2 million people that have done the same. And as always, thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Until next time, bye-bye.